Please welcome President and CEO, GE Additive, Jason Oliver. I joined GE Additive in January of this year. And as I walked through our facilities for the first time, I had a flashback to 1986. I'm in the back of a Mercedes on the Autobahn in Germany, going over 130 miles an hour. I'm 16 years old. I've never been out of the United States. And I'm in a car with this host family that I just met. And they're trying to communicate with me in a language that I think I should understand, given my extensive one semester of high school German. Of course, the only thing coming to mind is Ich heiße Uta, which means my name is Uta. So it's not going well in the car. You know, the German countryside is flying by in the window. I'm holding on to the armrest for dear life and it hits me. The world is not the place that I think it is. The world is not like the cattle farm where I'm growing up in, in, in Kansas. The world does not work the way my parents tell me it should work. So I'm completely uncomfortable. I'm out of my element. And it's awesome. And I love it and it changes my worldview and my life forever. I call this my Audubon moment. So that first week in January, as I'm walking through the GE additive, GE additive facilities, and I see the future of additive manufacturing, I have this Audubon moment. Because I realize that the world of design and manufacturing is not what I thought it was. And the impact this technology will have on all of us is just massive. So this morning, I'm going to give you several real world, world examples of metal additive manufacturing that will show you that the technology is already changing the world we thought we knew. But before I do that, let's talk about some of the benefits of additive manufacturing, or 3D printing, as many people call it. We can make things that are lighter, cheaper, faster turnaround, with less waste. We can do prototyping. We can personalize things. Heck, we can make super tiny holes that are square. Right? You can even make a tiny statue of yourself, right? a mini-me. Anybody done that? That's, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. But look, these benefits are real. Okay? It's just a little difficult to quantify the size of our industry at the moment. But here's what we know. In the last four years, $13.5 billion have been spent on 3D printing machines, materials, software, and print services. But folks, here's the deal. This is the tip of the iceberg. Because these benefits I'm talking about, the, the hype in the media, the disruption that has already taken pay, place in some of these industries, comes as a result of thinking about 3D printing and additive manufacturing from a subtractive point of view. What this does is it fails to unlock the full creative capability of additive manufacturing. OK, let me break it down. Subtractive manufacturing is simply the old way of making things. You take a block of something, right? It could be aluminum, and you machine away the parts you don't want. Subtractive process. With additive, we're starting from scratch. We're building from a blank, blank, slate, blank slate, putting down powder layer by layer and using an energy source like a laser or electron beam to melt the powder and create the exact part we imagined in a single process. So here's the point. When we think about 3D from a subtractive point of view, we're just limiting ourselves. What becomes possible when we free our imaginations and think about 3D printing from a 3D point of view. 3D in 3D. So let me introduce you to some people and companies that are doing just that, thinking about 3D in 3D. First example, a company by the name of Stryker. 
Right? These guys are leaders in the medical technology space. And it's our pleasure today to have several of them with us, including John Holler, their Vice President of Global Supply. John's going to be up on stage in one of our panels later, and we're really looking forward to, uh, to what he has to say. So you know, it was my pleasure to visit their latest additive manufacturing facility in Cork, Ireland earlier this year. And I have to tell you, it was another Audubon moment for me. It was just like that first day at GE walking through our own labs. And it was, I, was, I was blown away. And it wasn't because of the great whiskey we drank together that night. It was more about the fact that the guys at Stryker have put together the planet's most advanced additive manufacturing facility. Okay? What is Stryker doing? They make titanium medical implants. And these implants have a very unique porous surface structure that actually fosters bone growth into the implant. This is game changing. This porous structure can only be produced with 3D printing technologies. To date, they have produced over 100,000 of these 3D implants. So their customers today are out there enjoying walking their dog again working in the garden, or even lifting a grandchild. How did they do this? They started out years ago already thinking about medical implants with 3D in mind. 3D in 3D. And today, our friends at Stryker are making the impossible possible. Example number two, GE Transportation. These are the folks at GE that make, among other things, locomotives. And they've always had this dream of making a hybrid electric locomotive. They have one big problem, space. That engine and, and the heat exchangers, for example, take up a ton of space. So the engineers at GE Transportation started thinking years ago about heat exchange. And they realized that and learned that through development of complex geometries, super thin walls of metal, and so on, they could shrink that heat exchanger down significantly while increasing its efficiency. And what did that lead to? They actually reduced the heat exchanger for a locomotive from 2,000 parts down to a single part. They saved 80 inches worth of space in the engine. That's over six feet, more than enough space for the batteries for a hybrid electric motor. So they're saving costs in transportation. They're lowering emissions to help our planet. And they did all this by thinking about 3D from a 3D point of view. Example number three, in aviation. Now, the aviation industry, amazingly, is rapidly moving toward 3D printing. GE Aviation is a perfect example where they're already designing for additive. They are rethinking core components in an engine. And they're actually rethinking an entire aircraft engine with 3D in mind. Frankly, this movement by GE Aviation is the reason that I'm standing here today. It's the reason that GE Additive exists. And it's the reason that today, GE is all in on 3D. So in 2009, a small group of engineers at GE Aviation were handed a virtually impossible task. Okay, One member of this team, Josh Mook, is here with us today. And He'll also be up here on stage. Josh today runs our disruptive lab. So the team was challenged to create the perfect fuel nozzle for a new engine that eventually became the LEAP engine. So the team did this. They imagined the perfect fuel nozzle, and they took it out to their suppliers. And they got the same response over and over. Guys, we can't make this. We can't make this with traditional methods. Go somewhere else. So that's what Josh and the team did. They started looking around. They ran into Morris Technologies, a company out of Cincinnati that was one of the first to really step into and commit to metal additive printing technologies. Greg and the team showed our team what was possible with additive. Right? They started trialing and testing printing over and over and over. They failed at this for a year until they put together the perfect fuel nozzle. So the team took this back to their bosses at GE Aviation, and frankly, the rest is history. Because this was GE's Audubon moment about 3D printing. 
GE quickly became Morris Technologies' biggest client. This led to an acquisition of Morris Technologies by GE. And there was lots more to come. A couple of years ago, GE purchased Concept Laser out of Germany, uh, a developer and manufacturer of direct metal laser melting machines. Thank God there's an acronym for that, DMLM. They also, on the same day, purchased Arcam, a company out of Gothenburg, Sweden, that makes electron beam additive machines, or EBM. Going forward, GE Additive will continue to bring together the best in the world of additive all under one roof. So what were the results of the team's work on the fuel nozzle? 25% weight reduction. We've got 18 or 19 nozzles in each of the engine, depending on the version. 95% reduction of inventory, five times more durable parts, and a part that's actually been taken down from 20 parts to a single part, and a 30% improvement in cost efficiency. Leap is now the fastest selling engine in the history of aviation, and GE is the world's largest user of, add of additive manufacturing machines. So example four, the catalyst engine. So I talked about GE Aviation taking a look at parts. Now they took a look at an entire engine. And the results of the new advanced turboprop engine called the Catalyst is that it's 25%. It contains 25% additive printed parts. They took 855 parts down to just 12. And an interesting aside on this, they did a calculation and found out that those 855 parts would have had to travel 60,000 miles to get to final assembly. The 12 parts travel across a parking lot. What else? So Catalyst, 5% lighter than any other engine in its class, 20% lower fuel burn. So in a world where 1% or 2% fuel efficiency translates to huge savings, imagine what 20% does. Folks, all these examples I've given you today are real world. They hit the sweet spot for where 3D metal additive fits today. And it's actually a good fit for where GE is today in the various businesses. This is a high value, low volume kind of market. But what about the future? Take, take automotive, right? This is, this is a high volume market, right? These guys like to make millions of cars and, millions, and produce millions of parts. At the pinnacle of automotive, though, is Formula One racing. These are the guys that will do anything to get an edge, right? Their parts are high value, generally low volume. Additive is already giving these guys a chance to reimagine what a race car can do, and GE Additive is helping them as they rethink about their world and they think about 3D in 3D. So, can you imagine a world where heat exchange, fluid flow, complex parts and systems are completely rethought and reimagined with additive manufacturing in mind? Can you imagine a world where high-end alloys are easy to work with? Can you imagine a world where moldings and castings don't cost a fortune and it doesn't take them forever to deliver it? Can you imagine a world where additive does impact those high-volume markets like automotive? Well, for that last one, we need speed. And this is what's coming with a technology called BinderJet. BinderJet is a technology that GE is taking to the next level and will be re re releasing a system in the very near future. BinderJet prints 100 times faster than current metal additive technologies. So imagine 1,000 becoming 100,000. So anyone here in one of those high volume markets, standing back and waiting to step into 3D printing, pay attention. Because BinderJet is going to dramatically disrupt the world that we thought we knew. So I started out talking about the size of a market, talking about $13.5 billion invested over the last four years. As we at GE take a look at where the market's going, we see a market that over the next 10 years will approach $280 billion of investment. 
And why is this? Because we're already out to disrupt ourselves. We have some big things going in our disruptive labs. I can't tell you about them yet, but what I can do is I can invite you to jump in the back of that Mercedes with me. The Audubon moments are gonna be coming fast and furious. We're gonna go faster than ever. We'd love you to join us. We'd love you to teach us, guide us. Come be a part of this journey with us because ultimately, what's in the lab, it's for you. Thank you. So, on behalf of all of us at, at GE, welcome to Industry in 3D. This is gonna be a great day. Uh, we have a lot of smart people coming up here on the stage talking about making the impossible possible. Uh, downstairs, there are displays of, of some amazing things that, that we and many companies have done together. Uh, please keep an open mind. The Audubon moments, I hope you find a couple of them. Uh, and, and let's all spend the day thinking about 3D in 3D. Have a great day.